Imagine a world where predictable results come reliably from thought, where healthcare works and corrections are therapeutic. Imagine a world that is safe, clean, and flourishing. In fact, don't imagine. In the next 20 minutes, you'll see how we can end abuse, clean up water, and reduce violence on the planet. No kidding. Here on Imagine. I'm your host, Bob Keaton. Raymond Grace, you'd still call yourself a dowser, wouldn't you? Well, dowsing is one of the things that I do. Uh, I call my workshop self-empowerment. Dowsing is simply a way to achieve it. It's just one of the ways to achieve it. We were talking about the workshop on body intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something about us that brings memory forward, right? There's something about us that even something from a past life or ages ago might still be affecting us. True? Well, I believe that's true, yes. This is the way that I started out doing something. It was been 10 years ago last month. My buddy Jeff Jones and I uh, worked together uh, rather closely. We exchange ideas with each other. One day we were talking about water, which is water has been one of my major things of cleaning up water in the world. And by the way, Bob, uh, the last count uh, that would have been two years ago when you and I were at the Dowsing Conference. We had, at that time, reached 142 countries uh, with with our films and information and so on. So, one of the second principle upon which my work is based is energy is impressed upon matter. Mm. Well, thoughts and actions are energy, and water is matter. And I got to thinking one day that... All of the atrocities, the starvation, the wars, the butchering that people have done over the centuries has been impressed, at least to some degree, upon the water on this planet. So the more I thought about that, the more important it seemed to become. Because human beings have got a very poor track record of being kind to one another. Uh, you, you can read the the Bible and the most of the Old Testament is about war and butchering and people killing each other and enslaving each other and all this. So I thought, well, a lot of this suffering has been impressed upon water, energy being impressed upon matter. Well, our bodies are made mostly of water. So I used my dowsing to check to see what was the effect of the negative energy in the water that was in my body. Dr. Emoto told me that an adult is 70% water, an infant is 90% water, and if we get below 50% water content, we simply die. Mm -hmm. So, so you're right about that. Yeah, we yeah. are water. Well, uh, then I got to thinking, how much of the water in my body has been impressed and affected by the actions of people a few centuries ago. And the only way I knew to come up with an answer was simply to douse it. Because if we know how to ask questions, know how to douse, we can find out most anything we want to know. Asking the right question is the key to it. So I simply ask, what's the effect of the negative memory of water that's in my body? And I got that it was mildly negative. It wasn't really severe. And it was, I think it would be different for different people. Well... Jeff and I got to thinking about this, so we decided, okay, we're going to remove the negative memory from the water of our body. Now, I will kind of just paraphrase how we did this, but what happened, our bodies started going into detox. Now, we were not traveling together at the same time. We were uh, just staying in touch by phone. But one of the first things that happened was uh, we started sweating a lot, and especially at night. I would wake up at night, and I, as you see, I have long hair, and there wouldn't be a dry hair on my head. And that was unusual. And then uh, water just ran through us like a screen. You couldn't really make it from one rest area to the other on the interstate. Good thing it had trees alongside the road. <laughs> um, so then the next thing that happened was we got a terrible body odor, needed a shower about every two hours, the odor seemed to have not have any effect at all on it. And then we got a case of pimples. Our plan was to remove the negative memory from the water in our bodies. And that's the way it came out. There's something called surface tension. 
Now, I'll give you the scientific definition of surface tension. It is the amount of pressure required to penetrate one centimeter of water. Now, I'll give you a hillbilly definition. You've seen a leaf floating on a bucket of water. That's because the leaf does not break the surface tension. But if you were to take a bottle of detergent, squirt some of it in the water under the leaf, the leaf would probably sink. Why? Because detergent lowers the surface tension of water. So that's what we did. We lowered the surface tension of the water in our bodies in order to allow it to, uh, to, to release all the negative memory. And this process went on for about two weeks. And according to the best dowsers in America that we could get to help us out on this, the surface tension of the water in our bodies dropped dramatically. I haven't been able to get any scientific evidence as to what is the lowest surface tension ever recorded in a human body. I've asked uh, about this, but I haven't found anybody that knows. So the only information I can give on it is this what we got with our dowsing. What we do know is that our body went through uh, a physical cleansing. And we seem to feel quite a bit better. We actually wondered if our body uh, got low enough in surface tension, lower than the river or the lake, if we could walk on the water. <laughs> so far, it hasn't worked. Every time I've stepped on water so far, I went in. So maybe it was just a theory. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about water and the fact that we are mostly water, one word for you, Fukushima. Okay, now I don't know a lot about that, Bob. Um, there's a lot of things going on out there in the world that we might or might not be able to do anything with. I don't like to say we can never do anything. I always think that we should give it a try, and I have worked on that. Now, what we have done, uh, Bob, as a matter of fact, I just did this this morning on the way up here. I have a new client up in Boston. And I said, how is your water? What kind of water do you have? She said, oh, I, I buy a bottle of water. She said, this water here doesn't taste good. Mm -hmm. Well, city water, for the most part, is not very good quality. See, all water is not equal. Just because it's wet doesn't mean it's equal. And water has a spirit. But most water, especially commercial water, does not have the spirit of water. What I learned is if there is greed in the water, or it's being sold mostly for greed, then the spirit of the water won't be there. The spirit of water will not stay where greed is. I've pretty much con convinced myself of that in the last 10, 15 years I've been doing this. So uh, I talked with this girl for a few minutes, and I said, uh, go to the kitchen and take a drink of water, tell me what you think. And she came back on the phone and said, this water tastes good. I said, that was the plan. So far, Bob, we've done this. Uh, I did it in Rome, Italy about two months ago. Now, please don't try to contact me to do this for you because there's more of you than there is of me, and uh, there just wouldn't be time to do it. So if you want to learn about this, what I'm giving Bob here in this interview today is cutting-edge information that I have yet uh, not recorded or written anywhere. I might sometime in the future if I have time because it's something the world really needs to know. Um, in order to do this, uh, really requires a focused mind. And that means, uh, if I can say this in semi-scientifically, being able to function at a deeper level of mind. Now, Bob, when I teach my normal self-empowerment classes, that's the first thing I do is show folks how to think at a deep level of mind and add power to their thoughts. And I do this fairly thorough. It's a matter of concentration, but it's also a matter of brain frequency. And the power of thought lies in low brain frequencies. And if that's a little too complicated, call it a relaxed state of mind. And if that's too complicated, call it daydreaming. It's really that simple. The problem is most folks daydream uh, uh, and worry about something they don't want to happen. It's called worry. But what they're really doing is feeding the problem rather than creating a solution. So the first rule of success is think of what you want, not what you don't want. Because see, there, there are, as you well know, there are an infinite number of probable futures, and whichever one that happens depends upon where we put our energy. 
So if we worry about something, we're putting our energy into what we don't want to happen. The first principle is that all things, including your thoughts and emotions, are composed of energy. The intelligent human mind can direct energy. The second one I've already given, energy is impressed upon matter. That means you are affected by everywhere you've been and people you have associated with, even the thoughts of not only yourself, but the thoughts of other people. And the third one, the principle I borrowed from Einstein, of energy follows thought. I was just thinking that the big difference between you and many other people like myself, you don't see a limitation where I don't see a possibility. You don't believe you can't, and most people don't believe they can. I think you've summed it up pretty good, Bob, because I haven't done many things with smarts. I've done most things because I didn't know they couldn't be done. Uh, now, you and I did interviews 10, maybe even 15 years yeah, ago, right. and it's the first time we've had an opportunity to get back together, so a lot of things have happened since then, an awful lot of things. I don't think I told you about uh, the well up in Saskatchewan, and this would have been back in 02. I was traveling across Saskatchewan with one of my friends, and we were invited to spend the night at a place. And when I got there, I found out why they invited us. The man said he had a well that had a lot of arsenic in it, well above the accepted safe level attested by the uh, Canadian government. And he wanted to know if I could clean it up. And I said, well, I really don't know anything about arsenic. Uh, uh, but, you know, I'll, I'm here. I'll do what I can. He's now, we have a closed cap on this well. You can't energize any water and pour it in there. Said, well, that's okay. I'll, I'll do the best I can. Let me know what happens. In about two months, I get a very excited phone call from him. He's had the Canadian government test the water, and there's barely a trace of arsenic in it. Okay, what did you do? Uh, I'll give you the terminology I use. This is a, a terminology I just, I didn't actually make it up. I kind of borrowed it from um, what I'd heard about TV. It's called scramble of frequency. See, uh, the, I, I heard about scrambling uh, channels on uh, on TV, and I don't know much about TV because I seldom watch it, but I just heard folks talking about they were scrambling a channel so they couldn't watch it to, uh, for free anymore. They had to pay for it. Okay, I think, well, if they can do it, I can do it. I'll just apply it to something else besides TV. So everything has a frequency. Now, the definition of frequency is the speed at which an element vibrates. So I scrambled the frequency of arsenic and adjusted it to the frequency of water. That's like introducing chaos. I keep everything real simple. It's what I call barnyard logic. <laughs> if you yeah. uh, scramble a frequency of something, yeah, you are disrupting it. Right. And uh, I believe that we have the ability then to transform it into something beneficial. Now, I remember at the Dowsers Conference in Vermont that there was a group that they asked you to help them with water there, and you said, no, I won't. Oh, and yeah. And we were shocked until you explained the rest of it. Yeah, uh, I was on a on an internet show with some host out of Vancouver one night. It's been several years ago. And someone wrote in and said, come to Africa and clean up the water. And I said, I'm not the one messed it up. People have to learn to take responsibility for themselves. I said, I don't know that I have the ability to do that, but I wouldn't do it if I could. Because if I did, and you don't change anything, then you will have it messed up again by the end of the week. Now, I got a, a email recently from India, clean up the Ganges. I said, I'll make a deal with you. Stop dumping dead bodies, raw sewage, and chemicals in it, and we'll talk. I never heard any more from them. You see, if you keep on doing what you're doing, you're going to keep on getting what you're getting. And the biggest problem with water pollution is ignorance and lack of respect. And until those two problems are solved, people are going to be dealing with polluted water. And water is basically the essence of life. I mean, nothing lives without it. And that's why I started 30 years ago to work at cleaning up the water on this planet. I didn't really know how I was going to do it. I just knew it had to be done. I thought, well, maybe I can find a way. And it's working. It's not, we, we haven't reached out as far as I would like to. But we're gaining on it, according to what we can uh, find out from the YouTube. Our films have been seen in 142 countries, 
and I didn't spend any money getting there. It was all word of mouth. I just set a goal to do it, and I just didn't know I couldn't. And see, I didn't have any background for this. I'm basically a construction foreman. But when I realized that every day we were using more water to flush toilets, wash cars, fill swimming pools, and water lawns, and every day we got more and more people using the water, it's a trend that cannot continue indefinitely. Something has to change if humans are ever going to have decent water to drink. So I set a goal to help people have decent water to drink. I made a DVD on it. It's called Energized Water. It's available on my website at raymondgrace.us. And uh, a lot of people have used it to clean up water, and that's what I wanted them to do with it. And we've made films. Uh, one is um, Blueprint for Freedom, which I made to stop abuse on women and kids. Uh, those have been our two main projects for our foundation work. According to the feedback, we got really good results on it. But then I realized that most people don't know anything about human trafficking, so they won't be interested. Or don't want to know. Well, you know. That true, what I learned was it was the third largest illegal operation on this planet. And I, I got to thinking, the same principles, for the most part, that contribute to human trafficking, contribute to schoolyard bullies, uh, harassment in the office, abuse in jails, nursing homes, hospitals, and other places. So I just made a film that people can watch and apply that. Now, the folks watching it don't really have to understand it. That's a good part. What we found, Bob, was that we could put an intent into a film and carry that intent anywhere it's played, or not only where it's played, but where the person watching it chooses to direct it. Uh, I learned that on um, being on Coast to Coast Radio back in 04. George Norrie, the talk show host, mm -hmm. asked me a question that night. He said, if uh, the folks listening out there, and said, we've got five to ten million of them, if they were to put a container of water by the radio, can you change the energy of it? And I said, I don't know. Let's try and find out. So during the station break, I went through my mental process of what I would do to clean up the most polluted water I could think of because I figured there was somebody out there had some that was really bad. So when we came back on the air, about all I had to do was keep talking, and we took uh, phone calls, and the folks called in that the water tasted better. They drank some of it, and some of their aches and pains went away. I've got a very good friend now who was listening that night. He was a truck driver, and he had a backache. He drank some of the water and the pain went away. No, we didn't know that was going to happen. I was very thankful that it did. So I got to thinking, if we can change the energy of water over radio waves, we can do it with a film. So we made a film to do that. And then I got to thinking, if we can change the energy of water, we can change the energy of in a house, an office, a school, uh, anywhere else. So then we made another film for that. And it's called Change Energy, Change Your Life. And we didn't really know when we started that we could put energy in a film that would carry that energy where it was played or directed, but we found that we could. I love it. So in the past 15 years or so, what's happened? What's happened? <laughs> Anything you want to catch me up on? Well, the whole goal here, in, a, in addition to teaching people how they can have decent water and stopping abuse, is to empower people. And I call it freedom. I had a motto when I was 10 years old, went something like this, there is no substitute for freedom. And that's what we're about. I just see a need out here in the world, and I contribute to doing something to solve the problem. And you don't believe you can't. I don't even know But you know don't know for sure that you can either, that's true. right? I true. I don't know that we can, but I don't know that we can either. Let me ask if you've come up with any other questions. I remember you telling me you have two. Does it work? Is it useful? Yeah. Are there any more questions now? Have you added to no, that? No, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. When I get new information, I ask two questions. First question, does it work? Second question, does it help? I never ask a third question. I put it to use. What I found, Bob, is the people that continually ask questions, and they want detailed explanations on everything, and all the answers have to conform to what they are educated to believe. Well, I've learned something about these people. They don't ever accomplish anything. They just ask questions. If I'm asking you questions and I'm looking for answers that fit what I believe already, mm -hmm. I'm lost right there. Yeah, because you're not going to get them. I'll <clears throat> block it with my beliefs, right? All right. 
Bob, I'm sure you, you've uh, also heard this uh, illustration too. According to the law of aerodynamics, a bumblebee cannot fly. Right. You can it's, just look it's at it. very heavy body, short, stubby wings, yeah. and there's no way you can get off the ground. But no. the bumblebee doesn't know that. Nobody told him. No. He didn't go to school. No, I didn't either. <laughs> and then what I was told, I didn't believe. We'll have to do this again. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for the opportunity to come visit with you today. I enjoy talking to you. So we'll do another one.